top 20 cyberpunk video game music themes, starting with Brat Overflow, 13 Sentinels, Agus Rim. Don't get an Agus Rim in your butthole. <laughs> That's a main menu theme? That is very intense. I would be very excited to play this game. Actually, every track I've heard from this has been really good. And then I look at the thumbnail and it's always these sort of anime types, which turns me off. But then I see that there's a giant mech, which, but it's not done in like an irritating Gundam way. It's more like done in a way of, um, hey, that's kind of interesting and gloomy and, and, uh, and glittery and glitchy. And foggy. Not glittery. Foggy. So, I think that's a very good example of cyberpunk. It's got a lot of electronic sounds. It's got a kind of an oppressive feel to it, but it's got this kind of feeling like there's something heavy on top. Um, but then but then it's, it's it's like there's a rebellious undertone from it, trying to rise up and it's like like they're playing the synth so fast trying to trying to fight the oppression like they're they're jocked into their matrix jack off decks and they're just you know, like this. When I meant when I meant Gundam, I meant more like um, uh, just things looking really anime. Gundam was probably a bad example of that. Anyways, that was great, great theme. Next thing is uh, another Japanese looking thing: Zenonzard, the animation, Zenon tournament theme. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. Prince theme, yeah.
that was nice. That was a really nice example of uh, like futuristic pop. Oh my god! Emergency alert! Emergency alert! Public health emergency in effect. All public and private gatherings remain prohibited in red zones. Participants are subject to fines without notice. Police presence has been increased. You are asked to comply with public instructions. <laughs> Police presence has been increased. All public private gatherings remain prohibited in red zones. <laughs> Wow, that was quite cyberpunk, wasn't it? Holy, I just got that on my phone, and like Stella got that on her phone downstairs, too. I could hear it. Jesus Christ. Oh, my, that was freaked out. Um, anyways, you know what? That was a really beautiful piece of like future pop or kind of modern pop and like what you can do with um, interesting sounds, but still have it sound really, really lush and... Uh, like when it does do that breakdown, I love it. Did you get one at the exact same time as me? Ah, oh, so lush. Just want to roll around in it. Feels like being in love with a like an artificial AI construct. That was really nice. Good job, Prince. Next up from Stellaris, Synthetic Dawn soundtrack, Robo Sapiens. That is very moving and very action-packed and super epic. Really beautiful. Really gorgeous. Usually with um, these kind of games, because you're playing for so many hours and, and you're kind of looking at things on a grand scale and sometimes at a very small scale, they tend to have the songs slower paced and more drawn out, more like a Jeremy Soul Skyrim type, but Stellaris really goes for it. Like, the percussion and, and the epicness of it is pretty intense. When, when would this be playing? Would this be playing during, like, a 
a battle sequence or something or a cutscene because it's very very intense it's beautiful really 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 beautiful that was gorgeous robo sapiens on stellaris i feel like a jerk turning it down but we don't have two more minutes to listen to it next up oh deus ex human revolution this is track 68 that's a lot of tracks it's called harvesters and rocking really industrial I like that snare uh, and then it's kind of like it's like a trip hop beat but a little more aggressive with that second snare up front like really in your face it's almost like a like a robotic spider from the wild wild west crawling over bodies and cars and trying to get you like some kind of cybernetic thing chasing you down an alley and you're hiding in an air duct Oh man, that was cool. When I thought Deus Ex Human Revolution, I thought, oh, it's going to be some nice ambience. I was not expecting. Oh, all right. This next one is from the original Deus Ex. So that was from Deus Ex Human Revolution, which is the third in the series, the first reboot. Did it start reboot culture? I don't know on the PS3. Great game, Human Revolution, but we're going all the way back to the very first game, 2000's Deus Ex. A game that really started the uh, the trend of um, immersive action RPG. This is called Area Fifty One Ambient. Mm, I feel like I'm in a temple. Temple of robots. Base, 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 base. Back to Belcher to the future. Really nice ambient track, but very kind of dirty, dark, dark neon lit alleyways of authoritarian suppressive regime. Definitely, like you are, like you are kind of running out in some some neighborhood that has is called a sector, and there's searchlights, and they're finding out 
And they're shining a spotlight on you going, You there, do you have COVID? Submit yourself to COVID medicinal vaccine testing immediately. And Prince is off having cyber sex somewhere. Jack's position of introspection on the meaning of existence alongside an immediate struggle to survive a very harsh world. That is the cyberpunk baby, 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 baby. That was beautiful. All right, next up is... Well, all it says so far is Cargo High. Oh, I think it's from Death Stranding. Wow, that was really nice. Really, really beautiful, big, giant, lush synth waves there. Just, and I mean, this music is usually scoring when you're about to be attacked by the um, by the Amazon delivery people. And I think it does a good job of sounding kind of like a klaxon, kind of like a warning sign, and this feeling of um, the. Wi it, I think it really scores well because that game is all about like hills and mountains and stuff, right? So the way that they're these like cars and people and motorbikes are like coming over the hills after you. And you're kind of riding that wave of being out in the world. On the futuristic world. Being rained on by terror. Fantastic. Very day of sexiness. That wasn't an elevator and this is playing. That would that would be great elevator music if the elevator was dropping from the hundredth floor down to the basement. Next up from Transistor, same devs that made Bastion, Pyre, and the newest game Hades. We all become. When you speak, I hear silence. Every word I I can hear, oh, I can hear Think I'll go where it suits me Moving out to a country
Wow. Now that was the least, probably the least um, cyberpunk we've heard so far, but I still think falls within the realm of it. It is. It has more organicness with the piano and, but the piano still mo like mostly digital and very arpeggiated, like a lot of, like a lot of cyberpunk stuff. Um, but I think that the way they do the vocals and and often kind of devolve the vocals down a bit to that like telephone uh, distortion, I think works pretty well. And also the drums are. It's like a real drummer wouldn't be playing the drums that fast when this thing really gets going into that breakbeat. So I think it works out pretty well. All right, next up is Das Bunka. All walls must fall. A techno or tactics game. Techno R. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to, I like to, I like to move it. That has some uh, really hard FM synth, very Genesis sounds in it. I like the the really low, almost mucky, like Ted was saying, that kind of like blurry horror reverby. It kind of sounds like dark walls rising rising above, like a teeming mass of people sort of screaming below. The worker force getting smudged out. Pretty interesting. It does sound kind of like an anarchist ride on the rise of the working class. Interesting track. Very cyberpunky. Next up, Syndicate Wars, track three. Tons and tons of space in between. So much where you think the track's over. Good for, like, exploring something underground or something 
you're unsure of, like you guys were saying, uh, like an ancient mystical vibe. You would not feel comfortable exploring a dilapidated industrial complex, but it would be... It definitely seems like whatever team of cyberpunk people you've put together, you've just uncovered something much larger than you ever were supposed to know. Where you've gone? Wait a second. What is it we've come here to steal? Who are they? What is this? You've discovered something much larger than yourselves or anything you ever could have imagined. And now you're in too deep to get out the way you came. Foghorn? <laughs> yeah, this is Winnie the Pooh Cyberpunk Edition. Next up, ooh, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Game capitalizing on the popularity of uh, Synthwave at the time. Pre-Stranger Things, but still capitalizing on sort of like people of the late 30s, early 40s who grew up in, in the 80s, rocking out to that stuff. Even calling, um, even setting the game in a future of 2007. It's very, very 80s. Yeah, I think the interesting thing with this one is that it's it's very tongue-in-cheek. They were really going for... There's a lot of irony in what they're doing. Trying to recreate that feeling of, a, of the 80s version, vision of the future, but like a campier kind of vision. But like um, one Lich was saying, becoming cybernetics from human. I do love how that piano does fade out with this sort of like cybernetic heartbeat behind it. And this part here, being your new cybernetic cart, pump into life, and then it goes into full on. Now you've entered this new world. Pretty interesting. Neon. Uh, what? Neon Genesis Evangeline N64? This was an N64 game?
I wouldn't I wouldn't really say that that's much of a cyberpunk theme other than the N64 chip making it sound more uh, computerized than it is. That's just more like a JRPG theme that is from a game that's based, I guess, on a cyberpunk world or sort of. I think that was a very poor excuse to force in a game that Lena really likes. Well, he's probably never played the game, but to force in any kind of a mention of an anime that he really likes. Next up, Remember Me. cyberpunk theme a lot of electronic elements you can have the organic things like the piano and the vocals but taking the vocal and chopping it up making it sound very robotic making it sound really glitchy that is some fucking cyberpunk next up Sega Frontier Last Battle definitely works uh, that pounding really fast robotic sounding bass line that is a percussion uh, there's, there's a lot of the synths over top a lot of arpeggios it just sounds like uh, it sounds like some kind of cyberpunky band shredding away in some cyberpunky lounge in the future fantastic very good choice oh the next one is from shadow and returns it's called bloodhounds <laughs>
I find that main theme very simple, almost like the um, beginning of Metal Gear Solid on the PS1. Bum, 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 bum. Those, um, I forget what we call them, but when you have the two notes moving together. Oh man, I find it so emotional and so evocative. What a, what a cool choice. There's something about those two notes dancing together and feeling a bit sort of off where you would normally put them. I mean, that that melody s says so much about it, and then there's everything around it, whether you want to build up really slowly and make it feel kind of stealth and creepy, whether you want to have this kind of like funky, dirty grind in it too, but it's that main theme is so bloody good. They brought back, this is a uh, Marshall Parker, and either his son or his brother working with him, but he composed the soundtrack for the Super Nintendo version of Shadow, which is a great, more moody Shadowrun soundtrack as compared to the Genesis, which just had a bit more of a driving synth rock soundtrack. This is... Man. I, f I totally forgot this theme existed. So bloody good. Alright, next up is... Confront the Enemy, the Digimon story, Cyber Sleuth. Prince... Uh, Digimon Cyber Sleuth, I was a little apprehensive that it would be super cyberpunk, but it totally was. It sounds like it's like really, hey, Legendary 26, 
very, very dancey, but kind of doomy and gloomy, kind of like yeah, like like rich people having a big dance party on on top of a top of a ceiling. But that ceiling is um not a ceiling, a rooftop. But that's like on the backs of all these people being exploited underneath. It's uh, super interesting. Great, very, very, very cyberpunk track. I do, I do. I think they've all been extremely cyberpunk, except for that one Evangeline. Next up, Pathologic. Classic. Utroba disease. Yeah, let's see. The, dr the drums make this cyberpunk. I think this one is, is kind of the best example of somebody who wasn't familiar with cyberpunk and was going like, I, I don't know what I can put in, you know, I don't know which, uh, does it have to be cyberpunk game? What does it have to be? No, you just need, it just needs some kind of electronic element and then, and kind of that dark, rebellious vibe. It doesn't have to have the dark vibe if it has more electronic cyberpunky elements throughout. It's kind of like you'll know when you hear it, but I think this is basically like the simplest way to make something cyberpunk is to is to have that another simple way is like have some kind of an arpeggio like a dark synthy arpeggio and waves of synthy sound that was really really nice pathologic next one is bugat freedom wars <laughs> Give me a pearl, give me a pearl, give me a pearl, give me a pearl. 
I really like that guitar. Yeah, it's really kind of like an industrial kind of dance, kind of gloomy. It's almost like a like somewhere deep in computer archive is, is speaking to you, like like an old hard drive has a song. <laughs> Next up, Final Fantasy XIV, Aziz La Theme. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't mean to stop that. That uh, that track is very very oppressive. It's very um. There's like a lot a lot of weight behind it. Sort of a uh, like a giant organ playing, mixed in with like really dark industrial tech uh, electronic textures. And I mean, I like that. It's got these dark, reverby delayed synth sounds than with that organ because the organ is at its time is was an incredibly impressive feat like for you to make of one of those big giant organs that they would play in a church i mean they are like hundred like a hundred feet tall or something huge and for one human to just sit at those and play it they're like an incredible feat of human construction and sort of the human spirit of creating music through this magnificent uh piece. That's why Hans Zimmer used it in Interstellar. All right, next up, Bill Kiley, Sneaky Driver, Katana Zero. Oh, some swing. Like our first bit of swing we've heard. Oh, 
Definitely a, a really fun track. You can hear when the people playing it are having a great time. This, it's got that swing feel to it. Each instrument is uh, taking turns having little solo pieces. Nice fun drum fills. What is Cyberpunk Legendary 26? Something that is has some element of electronic to it and has a, an attitude of uh, maybe like a, a darker attitude, a darker feel, maybe a bit of sleaziness, maybe a bit of oppression, maybe a dystopia. Futuristic sounds. Oh, that's nice. That's really, really nice. Next up, Ghost Runner, Daniel Deluxe. Let them know. I'm going to show you um, a shameless plug of a cyberpunk track I made for, well, I made it for myself, and then I set it to a Ghost in the Shell theatrical trailer that I chopped up and set to the music. No, Christmas and Ice Don't Overlap at all. Christmas is, is happy and, and warm and family and love and jingle jangle and da 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 hey ho yeah exactly we're thinking the the total opposite spectrum exactly lonely meditative okay let's see put it on the screen well look at that. Thank you. 
So the uh, Ghost in the Shell, visually really stunning. The the r- remake, reboot, live action version, visually amazing, and okay as far as the movie goes. But compared to the ideas and the execution of the original, it's like it didn't even understand what the what what worked about the original. It would it would recreate it would like rip these scenes from the original out and play them and uh it's like they didn't understand the tone they didn't understand what those original scenes were going for why they were important what was the emotional content out of it they just kind of oh here's a tank oh here's her going invisible and fighting a guy and which is kind of silly so with like a very not a great script but the visually just to look at it was uh it wowed me the entire time i was really happy to see it and I'm glad I watched it before the anime version. Because then once I saw the anime version, I go, whoa, this is what it's supposed to be. And I could see how people who had grown up watching the anime and uh, were really looking forward to this live action one would be, they'd be pretty disappointed in terms of like the emotional impact of it. But it's fun to look at. Well, it just, or it's by somebody that understood it. It's like, the, it's It's crazy. Something got really lost in translation. It's hard to make a movie. Movies, the thing with making movies is that things get passed around a lot. Scripts get modified. People start off with a script. Doesn't get off the ground. That person exits the project. Somebody else comes in. There's all, there's all this crazy amount of timing that happens. And then all of a sudden, you've got, uh, we're making the movie now. Do we have that right person? No, we don't. Oh, okay. Somebody else has to come in. Uh, they don't like this part. The producers don't like the People giving the money don't like this. Uh, the actor that we wanted no it's not the right person maybe we should we change this and they end up just kind of like you'd like to think that every script is is something someone has been dreaming up for their whole life and now is their chance to show it but it's not like that they just they make it when they can and it all comes together and you have like and sometimes you have true visionaries like Quentin Tarantino who have the ability and vision and clout to make it look exactly the way they want and then you have these other things where they go well we we own this property let's try to make something with it it's like the new star wars movies yeah it's star wars but there's nothing you're just bringing people in and having them make a script so fast and shoot it so fast that there's no time for anything visionary there's just time to throw some shit on the screen you know what we haven't listened to yet we've heard, have not heard anything from the cyberpunk 2077 Soundtrack. Here's the main menu theme.
that's a heck of a cyberpunk track. Not doing anything crazily new. But it has a lot of swagger, and they're doing it really well. Actually, I watched a, a video that's like behind the music of it, and they've brought in a really large team. Looks like they spent a lot of time, resources, money. Those are all resources on... But when you say resources, it just makes it sound like you're using wheat and stone and sheep. Brick mortar. Uh, they put a lot of work into it and a lot of research. And again, it was kind of like that idea we were talking about of just taking something and, sh and shitting it out because you need to or actually having a purpose and a big and a grand scheme of things of what you want it to be like. So, it's good. I'm very excited to hear the music in the game. But yeah, everybody, great picks. Everything except that Evangelion pick. Alright, so next week will be Ice slash Winter if you're watching the VOD on YouTube. Bye.